Welcome to a video presentation of the topic, Introduction to Matrices. You won't find this information in your textbook. It's an extra section, some extra <coughs> sections we cover. We'll spend about four or five days on matrices. Today is an introduction to matrices, very basics that relate to matrices. Then we study tomorrow multiplication, which is significantly harder. And then we study Kramer's rule for two days. Kramer's rule is the first time <laughs> we'll solve two equations with two variables. Up until this point, everything we've done this year has been one equation, or perhaps two, with just one variable, though. Now we're going to start taking care of two variables. So the problem you'd have to solve for x and solve for y. But that's a few days from now. Today we've just got the introduction to matrices. We start on the left side with a couple definitions. The definition of a matrix, a rectangular array of numbers, a rectangular array of numbers, <coughs> and elements, the numbers contained within a rectangular array the numbers contained within a rectangular array. So each part of the matrix, and all those things with the brackets on the side of the matrices, each number in there is called an element. Now at the bottom there, you've got some general information about matrices. No definitions. Okay? Matrices are generally denoted by capital letters, such as M-A-T, parenthesis, uppercase A, close parenthesis. M-A-T, parenthesis, uppercase A, close parenthesis. You know by now there are sometimes we use capital letters in math, and there's sometimes we use lowercase letters. Like if it's a variable, we use lowercase letters. If it's geometry, and we're talking about line AB, the A and the B are capital. This happens to be one of those times where it has to be capital. The size of a matrix is given by the number of rows it has times the number of columns it has. Rows are the ones that go from left to right or across. Columns are the ones that go top to down. And when the number of rows happens to equal the number of columns, we call that a square matrix. There's nothing particularly interesting about a square matrix other than that same number of rows and columns. Again, we denote them with capital letters. The size of a matrix is given by the number of rows it has times the number of columns it has, across for rows, top down for columns. When the number of rows equals the number of columns, we call that a square matrix. Now, there's really only two main things we're going to do with matrices today. We're going to identify the size of the matrix, okay, how big it is, and what element is where. And then we'll add and subtract the matrices, which is pretty easy as well. So let's go ahead and start with sizes and locations of matrices, or locations of elements. As you can see in this next column here, I've got the first problem there, and I ask you, what is the size of the matrix? And you can see the numbers there are negative 3, 2, 4, 11, and 0, negative 7. And then I ask you, what element is in R3C1, R2C2, and R2C3? Okay. So let's start with the size of the matrix. Again, the size of the matrix is simply the number of rows it has times the number of columns it has. So if you take a look, we've got one, two, three rows, and one, two columns. So it's a three by two matrix. Then at the bottom, they ask us what element is in R3C1, R2C2, R2C3. That's simply R stands for rows, C stands for column. 
So if I say R3C1, I mean what number is in row 3, column 1. That's all it means. Okay. So for R3C1, the third row is this one here. The first column is this one here. And they meet at 0. So 0 is in R3C1. All right, now in R2C2, second row, so on the 4 and the 11, second column, they meet at 11. So that's 11. R2C3, second row, third column. First row, second row, so again, 4 and 11. 1, 2, well, as you can see, there is no third column. So for this one, it happens to be no solution. Okay, let's look at the other one, similar problem. What is the size of the matrix? And as you can see, I've got 2, 4, 1, 9, 3, 7, negative 6, 8. And then I ask you what element is in R1C4, R4C1, R2C3. <coughs> All right, so let's start with the size of the matrix. How many rows does it have and how many columns does it have? Corinne? Four rows and two columns. Two rows and four columns? There you go. Two rows. Again, rows go across, columns go up and down. Two rows, four columns. Okay. So now we just have to identify the elements. By the way, sometimes they call the size of the matrix its dimensions. And you can see I've written that up here for you. Sometimes they call the size its dimensions. Okay. So now we've got to talk about elements. Okay, R1C4. What happens to be in the first row, fourth column? Jackie? Nine. Nine is in the first row and the fourth column. What's in R4C1? No solution. There is no solution. There is no fourth row. How about R2C3? Negative six, good. Second row, third column is negative six. Okay, so now we have to talk about adding and subtracting. 